Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. We're back with part three of the Colin First style no weld go-kart build. Now at the end of part two we've got a go-kart where the back end is looking pretty complete. There's not too much left to do down there. But here at the front we've got nothing. So first thing we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to get the front axle built uh, and steering and all that kind of stuff. Now this strikes me as an area where it'd be very easy to go wrong and kind of mess all this up. So this bit, I'm just basically going to copy exactly what uh, Colin did in his build and fingers crossed it'll all work out okay. Right then, let's crack on. Right, just getting this front piece in that our stub axles are going to mount to and we've hit a small snag. Now if you think back to part one uh, with the rear axle kit that I got, the, because the rear axle kit was kind of stepped and splined, it set where my chassis rails uh, had to be, you know, give or take sort of four or five millimetres, something like that, and where the wheels are in relation to those chassis rails. Now, what that meant was, when my wheel was going to go on in its original position, sort of somewhere here, we weren't going to have very much steering lock before the wheel hit the frame, which is not what we want. So what I've done, these bits here that uh, eventually the stub axles will mount to, I've had to move these out about 20 millimetres either side. So what that means is, as it stands, the front track is effectively 40 millimetres in total wider than the rear track. And ideally I'd have them both the same. I've had to do that though because by bringing the, uh, by bringing the wheel out, say from somewhere here to somewhere here, it gives us a lot more steering lock. Uh, not quite as much as I'd like, but a lot better than what it otherwise would have been. Now with the back axle, I can use some spaces and get about 10 millimeters either side. So when we're all finished, the back axle will be a little bit narrower, but only by 10 mil side, so it'll not look too bad. And I think we'll get away with that. So on this piece, you can see this little groove cut here. That's going to bend upwards so that this piece here is flush against this side here. And the angle of that cut, if we look at a stub axle here, we can see that the bit that the wheel mounts onto, this piece here, it's not perpendicular to it. In this case, it's about seven degrees off. And so that angle that that's at is replicated there so that when that mounts on it if you like at that angle this bit here with the wheel on stays parallel to the ground when we're in the straight forwards position but when that turns the angle of that relative to the ground changes and that helps with the steering geometry I i'm not a hundred percent sure exactly how that works but i do know that that's uh, that's what we're trying to achieve right i'll crack on with this bit Okay, we're making some good progress on this uh, front uh, sort of cross piece that holds our stub axles. We've got this L-shaped bracket on both sides, so that's holding that in place. And then on these end pieces, I've cut away all the metal that we don't need. We've just got the big hole in the bottom for the uh, little bottom retaining piece that comes through that holds the stub axle in. This still needs to be fully bent up tightly uh, against the frame here at that seven degree angle we talked about earlier. And then the rest of this metal is just cut away to allow the stub axle to move left and right uh, so that you know we get steering and I've just left a little rib on the back here just to give this bottom plate uh, a bit of strength although most of the load will be going into uh, the top plate that'll go on here so that little bit will just go in the bottom and then our sort of stub axle thing sits on like that and then that gives us our steering and then this is thicker than the box section that I'm using so on here underneath these two bolts We'll put some flat bar to make up uh, the height difference and then when they're the same height we'll put one big piece of flat bar that goes all the way across and across here and this little top bit will have a corresponding hole in it that will slot in from the top to retain it and we'll put a little seven degree bend in that top piece of bar that matches the seven degrees that this is bent up at. Do the exact same on both sides and that will be as stub axles mounted. Okay, we're on a different camera that I've not used before and I filmed a load of stuff of me doing all the steering on the go-kart and it turned out that I had the frame rate set wrong on the camera which meant the footage was all 
flickery and horrible because there was a mismatch between that and the LED lights here in the shed. So can't use any of that. So I'm afraid I'm just going to have to sort of tell you what I've done rather than uh, showing you a whole lot. But anyway, we're on steering. Got a proper go-kart steering column here and a couple of these uh, these bushes. I mean, again, these are uh, ones that I've got, but you could easily 3D print something like this. The idea with these, they just slide over the column and they allow the whole thing to turn, but they give you some nice mounting points, get some bolts through and get that structure, you know, back, back to the go-kart. And then where these bushes are going on the column, we've got these uh, these little lock collars, which means the column can't slide up and down. The bottom bush here, that's trapped between the sort of little arm on the steering uh, on the steering column and the bush, and then the top one uh, and the lock collar. And then top one, we've got a lock collar, and then the boss will go on here at the top that holds the steering wheel. Just got a couple little bits of uh, angle to hold the bottom uh, the bottom bush to the frame. And then on here, a pair of rose bearings, uh, M10 bolts straight through there. And then obviously this one will go to uh, the stub axle on this side. And this will go to the stub axle on the other side. So let's get this on the go-kart. We'll have a look how we've mounted it and, and how it's going to work. Okay, here it is installed on the go-kart. There is two little bits of angle iron that we saw on the bench. Uh, they're just bolted to this front cross member here. And then from that top bush, we've got two bits of flat bar, about 25 mil wide, two or three mil thick, something like that. Nice and easy to bend in the vise so we can get these two shapes to connect this top bush down to the chassis rails on each side. I've sort of put this top bush in upside down compared to the bottom one, and that just means these are lifted up a little bit more. So that means there's plenty of space here for the kids' legs and feet to, to get to the pedals. It'll not be too cramped for them like this. Steering wheel boss and steering wheel, they're just on temporarily just to help me get a gauge of where that needs to be set. Likewise, I've done the same with the seat, which I'll show you in a second. Again, just so I can sit them in and figure out sort of what angle uh, this whole uh, steering column needed to be at. Right, apologies for shaky cam, but I wanted to show you these uh, rose bearings on the stub axle here. Um, these are M10 rose bearings. We'll have a bit of threaded bar in there and that'll connect to this uh, corresponding one here on the end of the steering column. And then as we turn the wheel left and right, it'll move these and push our wheels uh, in and out. Now using a normal M10 hex head uh, bolt, like I've been using on a lot of the chassis builds for this, because of the size of the head on the bolt, we can see that it sort of limits the range of movement uh, of this rose bush um, more than we need and it's going to make it quite difficult to get a piece of rod in there and um, we're risking it touching the chassis so instead I'm going to use a, a cap head uh, you know a hex head sorry um, bolt instead the diameter of the head is slightly smaller but that means you can see there we get a much greater range of movement um, on, on the rose bush so that means just by swapping those bolts over we'll not have to modify anything here that'll drop on nice. So I'll fit this one to the other side, swap that bolt for uh, for one of these, couple of bits of threaded rod, and then that's our steering done. Okay, so here's this threaded rod installed on both sides. I put a lock nut, just uh, one on each end, so that when all this is uh, set for the final time, I can lock that up and then we know for certain that threaded rod can't turn. So to adjust this, you do have to unbolt it at one end or the other and then either wind it in or out, depending on what you need. It's almost certainly not set right now. I've just done it sort of roughly by eye. But when this is, uh, when we give this a test, we'll have a look, see how it is, you know, get a bit of uh, weight on it, get everything to settle down. And then we'll adjust it as need be then. It doesn't have to be set perfectly now, but just uh, from that, you can see that's going to work quite nicely that, you know, there's a steering done, pretty much. Just got to put the uh, steering wheel and steering boss on properly for the final time. Column's already drilled for that, so that's just going to be a case of putting the proper bolt through. Job's a good one. As it happens, I had a go-kart seat that I uh, bought for something else that never got used, so I may as well use it for this. Now, ordinarily, the, the seat would sit pretty flat like you're seeing it there, but... A sort of problem with that is, you see the front, this sort of kicks up quite severely. 
That's fine for an adult, you know, there's plenty of room for the sort of top of your leg up there and then your knee somewhere here down to the pedals, but for my kids who are only still quite small, I think that might sort of shove their legs a little bit high and then it'll kind of cramp the whole thing up. So I put a piece of flat bar on the front to fix in and for the back fixing, I've put a bit of angle. I may even change that for an even bigger piece of angle. And the idea is, rather than the seat sitting flat like that, when it's in the frame, it'll kind of sit more at a, a tilt, something like that, and if, you know, an even severer tilt if I do go for a bigger bit of angle. And then this front bit here, it's not tipped up quite so severely, so uh, it means a leg can just get a little bit straighter, you know, still have a bit of bend in, your, in the leg so that they can operate the pedals, but it'll not sort of cramp the whole thing up. And that's all I've done to the seat in order to temporarily rest it on the frame so that I could get the position of the steering wheel properly. When it's fitted for the final time, there'll probably be a couple more bits of bracing, just some flat bar like what we used on the steering column. It'll come from somewhere here down to the chassis, just to make sure that back's held nice and, uh, nice and uh, rigidly. Just use button head screws for this. Uh, you don't want hex head screws sitting on them. That's not going to be very comfortable. So just little button head screws. I use the same ones up here. You can pad these seats as well if you want a bit more comfort. So that's an option further down the line if we want to do it. Right, some updates. We're nearly... <coughs> right then, we're nearly there. Got the floor in, a bit of 12 mil ply cut to shape and then held into the chassis from the underside with some self tappers. Throttle pedal. We've got a rectangular slot cut out in the floor uh, underneath and then there's a, a screw in each corner that holds that in. Hopefully you can see that. I've just cut a little slot in it here to get the throttle cable out or the, you know, the electric cable for it so that uh, that can come up on uh, above the go-kart. We're not running it underneath. And then we've got a bit of angle here bolted to the chassis with a bolt sticking out and that's going to be our throttle pedal sort of limiter if you like. I need to start off with a slightly longer bolt than this but essentially we've got all the bolts sticking out so that limits his throttle pedal travel. And then as the kids get um, older, get a bit bigger and they get more confident on this, we can wind that back, we can reduce the length of it here by just effectively you know, having less stuck out this side and a bit more stuck out this side, that'll let the throttle pedal go further down, go-kart will uh, go faster. And since we can set this bolt to sort of any position um, of throttle pedal travel, we've got really fine control over the speed of the go-kart and we can take it off really gradually when the time comes. Here's our brake pedal um, that we saw earlier in the video. That's the little 3D printed piece I've made, uh, it just goes on the other end of the bit of the threaded rod that the brake pedal runs on. It's a little bit short, need to print a slightly deeper one of those. And here next to the master cylinder we've got a um, another 3D print, which is effectively a bracket for this switch. Now we've got a couple of slots in the bottom and some adjustment built into this switch by means of a hole for that bolt and an arced slot for this bolt. And so between the sort of fore and aft position with these slots and the uh, adjustability in the switch we've got from that, what I'm trying to do there is get it so that when the brake pedal is pressed, we can set the switch to come on just after the brake pedal's pressed. So if I uh, just sort of put that back where it was and press the brake pedal, you should just be, be able to hear the switch clicking. And the idea is that's the switch that'll connect to the um, the kind of brake uh, switch on the motor controller so that when you press the brake it automatically cuts out the throttle. So if somebody was pressing the throttle at the same time as pressing the brake pedal the motor wouldn't be trying to spin and we risk burning it out. This switch will cut that off automatically. And with the... Um, oh, drop the camera. And with the adjustment on it, we can set it to the exact right position to come on, sort of just after the brake pedal's been touched. So, main brake pipe, that's just tie up to this uh, chassis rail for now. Likewise, all the cables, they go down the far chassis rail again, just temporarily tie wrapped on. I'm going to temporarily connect the uh, controller at the back. I've checked all the nuts and bolts are tight, just going to tighten that switch up. And then, we can give this thing a test, see if it's going to work. Right, scratch that. 
we're not doing a test. Uh, I got it outside, didn't even get the camera set up. Um, I had two goes and both times uh, it's throwing the chain off within about five meters of me setting off. Now, it's not an alignment issue in that uh, these two uh, sprockets are out of a line sort of this way and that way, that alignment's still good that we did earlier. But if you look at the motor, you can kind of see it's almost tilting down like that. And when it's sort of tilting down, you kind of, the, the angle, if you like, of this sprocket is wrong. It's closer to the axle, so your chain gets slack, and then it's just coming off. Now, I don't know if we've bent perhaps this bit of angle that we're mounting on here at the back, or if we've bent the foot on the motor, which I think that's probably the bigger possibility, because it is only aluminium. But either way, we're going to have to um, move this temporary cable in, get the motor off, we'll have a look. We'll bend it back straight and a little tweak, a you know, little modification just to make it a bit stronger. And then, fingers crossed, um, we might get a proper test out of this thing. So yes, as suspected, it is the motor and it's the foot on the motor that's bent. It's kind of bent upwards a bit at the front, I think, and downwards a bit at the back. And you can see there, just looking at it on the bench, especially if you look underneath, that's at quite an angle now. Um, yeah, I think we have to sort of gently persuade this back into shape. I don't really want to hit it too hard, otherwise we risk sort of shattering or breaking the magnets inside. So we'll gently persuade it back, then I'll um, we'll have to have a think about how we're going to stop that happening again. So, yeah, a bit more work, a bit more tweaking to do. Right, this is the solution I've come up with. I've uh, bent the foot back, got it as straight as I can. Now we've got another thick uh, piece of steel. I can't remember the grade, but it's you know reasonably high grade, five mil thick bit of steel. A couple of holes in it in line with the foot, and then I've covered as much of each half of the foot as I can um, with a this this piece of steel. There's another one on the other side, and I kind of hope that's uh, like a sort of giant washer almost. In that by sandwiching the foot between the plate it sits on and this plate above it, hopefully that'll stop it deforming. Cause I'd can't see how this steel is going to bend, it should be too strong for that, so we'll cover as much of it as we can and hopefully that'll stop it bending. Can't really cover this bit right in there where it comes up and is welded on, but we'll just have to see if this is enough to stop it happening. So just connect the electrics back up and then we'll try again for a test. So, there we have it. Um, that was a really successful test. I'm over the moon with that. Everything worked how it was supposed to. Um, I'm just smiling, to be honest. I forgot just how much fun these things are to play about on. Um, did put the seat on, let the kids have a drive around the garden. Uh, obviously, much, much slower speed, and they really enjoyed it too. So, yeah, um, I'm happy with that. I think we can move on to the next stage. But that's going to be for the next video. We're going to leave it here for now. In the meantime, I'm going to take this all back to bits and get all these metal parts um, primed and painted up. And then after we've done that, we'll come back for the next video and we'll finish it off. We'll get it back together. We'll add all those finishing touches and then we'll give it a proper test and have some proper fun with it. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, give us a thumbs up, comment down below, all that kind of stuff. But for now, I'm just going to say thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.